Recording from the Sunshine City, St. Petersburg, Florida, overlooking beautiful Tampa Bay, this is the Sonography Lounge, sponsored by Gulf Coast Ultrasound Institute. This podcast is dedicated to medical professionals and patients around the world interested in diagnostic and interventional ultrasound. Our podcast will discuss everything ultrasound, from news, trends, career paths, new technology, and industry updates. Hosted by Lori Green and Tricia Rio of Gulf Coast Ultrasound Institute, they bring over four decades of experience in the ultrasound profession and are here to guide you through this journey. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy. Hey everyone, and welcome to the Sonography Lounge, sponsored by Gulf Coast Ultrasound Institute, where we discuss all things ultrasound. I'm Lori Green, and I will be co-hosting today's episode with Trisha Rio. Hey everyone. Today, we are thrilled to have with us Peter Magnuson, who currently serves as the Director of Communications and Member Services for the American Institute of Ultrasound and Medicine. In this role, he oversees membership, marketing, social media, and the Journal of Ultrasound and Medicine. Peter has been at the AIUM for eight years and enjoys developing new programs and opportunities for the AIUM's diverse membership. So welcome, Peter. Thanks for having me. We're glad to have you here. Um, Why don't you start out by telling us uh, how AIUM supports the profession of sonography and sonographers? No, it's a great question. I think maybe I'll start back in time a little bit and tell you a little bit about AIUM as we get started. So AIUM has been an organization that's been around since 1952 and AIUM supports any user of medical ultrasound. And so for us as an organization, that includes sonographers, obviously, Mm -hmm. physicians that use medical ultrasound, as well as scientific community that is doing research and development of new uh, products in the ultrasound space. And then also another part of our membership are the students, both sonography school students and medical school students who use and are hopefully learning how to accurately and effectively use Mm -hmm. medical ultrasound. So the AIUM supports uh, sonographers and those who are using ultrasound in a variety of ways. One way is through our education. So AIUM is a provider of ultrasound education and we do that through our journal, we do that through events, we do that through uh, courses and also online education, including a pretty robust webinar schedule. The other things that we do as an organization are we help develop like the training guidelines so what individuals should know and be able to do when it comes to ultrasound, how to perform procedures using medical ultrasound. And those kind of roll up for us into an accreditation program where we actually accredit a practice in how they use ultrasound whether or not their staff is properly trained, whether or not they're maintaining their equipment. And then we also do a lot in the space of research. So primarily through our journal, the Journal of Ultrasound and Medicine, where we're publishing articles and information from around the world, specifically in medical ultrasound. So several different ways that we support the profession. Yeah, that's actually how we heard about um, what we'll be discussing in a little bit here was through your newsletter. And I love getting your newsletter because I always see, you know, ultrasound now can do this or ultrasound has been found to help with this. And it's stuff that I would never even think ultrasound would be utilized for. So I really enjoy always seeing those uh, hot topics come through in the newsletter. Oh, great. Yeah, we kind of promoted this went back a little ways about six or seven years ago, maybe now, uh, we started kind of a a campaign around ultrasound first, Mm -hmm, really focusing on ultrasound being the first choice in the modality for imaging. And that's seen through our journal where we have a series of articles that really focus on that. And really, as we look to the things that we publish and the things that we do is trying to help push the profession, push the use of ultrasound and illustrating and showing how effective it can be um, at not only patient care, but also diagnoses. Yeah. 
Absolutely. And I think that's even more important now in the environments that we're working in is uh, not just the dedicated departments of radiology or cardiology, but the use of ultrasound across all specialty practices and uh, some being at the bedside and emergency medicine or critical care and so forth. Mm. And, and uh, you know, uh, trying to promote the fact that ultrasound should be used first other than some other uh, modalities that may be radiation producing and so forth is really important. I think that the learning curve for all these various specialty practices is you know, it's growing and they're needing to learn about that. So any way that we can get that pointing across to use ultrasound first is is great. And I know you all have done a wonderful job um, trying to promote that. We just had this discussion, yes. I feel like, two weeks ago we, we were having this. And it's funny because last week we were doing a point of care workshop, a scan workshop, and I had a co- couple of physicians from Alaska And I threw that out there. I said, well, you know, a few years back, AIUM did this initiative where it was ultrasound first. I said, so when you take this back to your facility, I encourage you, I even challenge you to think like that. Think ultrasound first. What can I do using ultrasound? And then if I still have questions, then I can turn to my other modalities. And that really put it in perspective for them. They walked away saying, I'm going to use that. I'm going to say that ultrasound first. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I think that's where, you know, a niche for uh, us and other users of medical ultrasound resides uh, because it's, it, there's so many advantages, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, it's not non radiation, like you guys mentioned, but also very portable now. So you can take it anywhere mm-hmm. and be able to, to, to diagnose. And in many cases, the studies and the research show that in many areas, ultrasound is as effective, if not more effective, in diagnosing. Uh, certain things within the medical space. So yeah. when you put all those together, it's kind of a no-brainer. Yeah, to exactly. About it. Yeah. Uh, uh, but it also, that's where the training and education become mm-hmm. vitally important, right? So right. in order to understand how it can be used for, say, you got to have some show some efficacy and show some proof and and provide some training and education in those areas. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. We just did a podcast not long ago with um, a couple of our uh, leading emergency and critical care uh, physicians, and that was big discussion. And uh, actually, one of the physicians is on the AIUM uh, task force for emergency ultrasound. And so we got into that discussion. And it's very easy for um, providers to, especially when they're really busy, to to take their normal uh, route of you know, mm-hmm. looking for disease or so forth um, using x-ray or CT and so forth. And so it, it takes a little time. It takes a little bit of education to, to help them understand what you can and cannot see by ultrasound and, and how that can benefit. So mm-hmm. especially in these point of care markets where, um, you know, they're learning something new. So they have to learn how to integrate that into their clinical practice. So yeah. that's all part of it. So, right. Yeah. And again, all of this goes back to education, mm-hmm. right? Exactly. I mean, they have to keep ultrasound very user dependent. So mm-hmm. making sure that those who are using the transducer and putting the transducer on a patient understand all that and are able to capture appropriate imaging so that those diagnoses can happen. Right. Um, but you're right. I think a lot of times the default or other imaging modalities for ease of use where the right person's not in the office to do the imaging with ultrasound. And, it, and it's unfortunate because I think in some cases it's to the detriment of the patient. Right, right. Yeah. And I also think that's where your guidelines are really beneficial as well <laughs> because, mm-hmm. um, you know, basically... It, it gives them a resource to refer to as to what protocols should be, should be implemented. And, um, you know, we all obviously, we everything we do in our training here is based on published guidelines. And, of course, AIUM is uh, one of the go-to ones. So um, I think that's important, too, that that just ties right in with the education. And it gives them a resource to go to to document that this is standardized yeah. protocols and this will help me to be able to uh, make the appropriate diagnosis in the end. So yeah, yeah. and it holds yeah, us it's a as... holistic approach. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. You right. can't do education without the protocols, without the understanding. So when you start to tie all this together, where AIUM has the training guidelines, we also have the practice parameters on how to do, and then you put together that with education and others using those resources to develop education. 
with the end result that we're making people better at what they do. Right. There's mm-hmm. a sense of accountability with all of that mm-hmm. that ties it all together. Mm-hmm. And the patient outcomes Absolutely. are improved. So, well, um, Peter, why, uh, we um, initially were in discussion with you about um, one of the grants that you're offering. So um, why don't we talk a little bit about that as well? Because um, AIUM offers a lot of different avenues uh, for people who need, need some education, but maybe they don't have the financial resources. So how about telling us a little bit about your AIUM's future fund and the educational grants that are being offered to sonographers and sonography students? Absolutely. So AIUM's future fund is a fund And what we've done over the past years is to fund research projects, opportunities, gatherings of experts in certain areas to kind of explore different topics and areas. So over the years, the AIUM's Future Fund has supported activities like the Ultrasound First Initiative that we've had. We did a series of forums around medical education and the integration of ultrasound and medical education curriculum. We've done specific topic-based forums on things like adnexal masses. And then we've also funded research projects. We've partnered with other societies to fund uh, major research projects. AIUM has also funded several research projects through the Future Fund. Most recently, we've been using some of the funds within that area to support some of our uh, education space uh, activities. So specifically, about five years ago, the AIUM started Sonoslam, which is a medical student competition that we hold at our annual meeting every year. So the Future Fund helps support that. And then most recently has to do with our sonography grant program. This program is one that we actually partnered with the American Registry for Radiologic Technologists, so ARRT. And the idea here is to provide additional funding for sonographers and sonography school students to help further their education and knowledge. And the way our grant works is, the first criteria is that you are an AIUM member Um, And for students, that membership is just $25. And for sonographers, that membership uh, is the most economical that we say in the space, um, (laughs) at basically $150 a year. Um, So that's the first criteria. And there's essay, two essay components to this grant. One is really talking about the value of certification. So going through that certification process, where is the value? And then we're also asking them for kind of a personal statement. Uh, what is it to them to be a sonographer or to being studying to be a sonographer? Where did they see their career going? How important is it for them to continue to learn? One of the things that we're trying to address is really looking at sonography as a profession and not look at sonography as a job. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that's a big difference, right? That's a a mental difference for a lot of people where I can see a career ladder, I can see opportunity within what I do gives me more of a career mindset to what I'm doing as opposed to, "Eh, I got to get in there. (laughs) I got to do my 20 scans today and then I got to go home. Mm -hmm, That's more of a job mentality, right? Right. And so, Part of the objective of this grant um, is to kind of understand the story of the people that we're going to be granting, but also providing them the funds because we do know that funds are tough, especially for students um, and even especially for a lot of sonographers where they're responsible for their own professional development. Mm -hmm. And so being able to offer this opportunity to our members kind of fits within our mission as an organization, which is really around education. So this is a program that we've had for, I want to say this is the fifth year that we've done it. Okay. And our board, along with the Future Fund leadership, has basically allowed and almost charged us with funding as many grants as we can through this program. 
technically we have to grant at least two, <laughs> one for a student and one for a sonographer. Okay. But last year, I want to say we did nine grants. Wow. This year, we would love to be able to double that. Oh, great. Um, so basically, the more that bonus. apply, the more that apply, yeah, the more I mean, you can give. The, I, I mean... Like, I'll tell you, I want to give away this money. Right? Yeah. Everyone wants to give away this money. I hope everybody's listening. Um, <laughs> yeah, please, please <laughs> apply because it's just, it's there. And, and you know, right now there's, there's things in this program that are really awesome. Like, there's no limitation. Like, if you receive a grant this year, you can apply next year. We don't kick you out because you want it once. Oh, um, nice. Because what we're trying to do is build that momentum, build that continual uh, education and that mindset within uh, our membership so that they're still seeing the value and continuing to learn, not just coming to AIUM just to earn CMEs. Mm-hmm. We want you to be able to like, learn and invest right. in your in yourself and in your profession. And the added thing that we've added as AIUM, so the future fund's the one that kind of just gives the money, right? Mm-hmm. AIUM as an organization. So a part of this is we will also, if if an individual receives the grant and if they want to attend an AIUM event, we'll actually waive the registration fee in oh. addition to giving them the grant money. What? So it's like a awesome. double, yeah, it's, a, like it's unbelievably generous. Yeah, <laughs> generous. We want to be able to do that. So, you know, and we have, we've had uh, people over the years that have been able to do that. And be able to take advantage of that. And then we do have people that, you know, hey, I just need to cover the cost of my exam fees, or I just need to cover the exo- um, the cost of some textbooks and things like that. And that's yeah. okay. Um, we're pretty liberal in how the user can use those funds. Now it is a reimbursement type program, so you got to actually, you know, Proof. provide receipts yeah. that you right. spent the money and then we'll reimburse it. Mm-hmm. Um, but that added benefit is unbelievable. So people can come to our an- annual convention or they'll come to OB course. We're coming into 2023. We're going to be having a pretty robust schedule of ultrasound events within our education center too. So if they want and there's space, we'll, we'll be able to provide registration for that too. So it's a, I think it's a great program. Like I said, I, we keep screaming that we want to give away this money. Um, so, yeah, any and everybody, please apply. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Any sonographer or student, sonography student listening better be going to our show notes. We're going to link the application in our show notes and click on that link so you can go fill out this application and complete your essays and hopefully get $500 to be able to. And I'm going to reiterate, you said certification exam fee. So if they're taking a registry exam, they can use this money to pay for that? Absolutely. That's oh, incredible. That's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, in, in the broad scope, it's education, and yep. the definition of education is even broader than that. So, mm-hmm. yep. uh, you know, obviously, if you want to go to Cabo or something, to pay that. <laughs> we're not paying for that. <laughs> but yeah. Well, what if there's a registry uh, exam for you there? <laughs> uh, okay. Now you're into a gray area. Push an envelope $500 there. $500 is not going to get you to Cabo. <laughs> so. <laughs> Just keeping it real here. I just want to emphasize, too, that, you know, I really um, believe this is a really good topic that you've you've selected for their application. And it's Mm -hmm. it's one that uh, our organization, Gulf Coast Ultrasound, Trisha and I talk about it a lot, uh, trying to help motivate, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, individuals in our profession, not only sonographers, but also physicians and other medical providers that, but particularly sonographers and sonography students that there's so many opportunities in the ultrasound profession for uh, growing your career and being able to provide more services to the, your community as well as your patients. And the more that you learn, um, there's just more, that much more that you have to offer to your patients. And a lot of times people do get stuck in that little rut where, you know, they do kind of think about just clocking in and going and doing their job and going home. But there's, as you know, ultrasound is such a diverse and rapidly growing profession and has been for years. And it will continue to be that way. And if you don't continue to learn, then you're going to get stuck in a rut and get get lost in the shuffle. Well, you're going to get left behind. Right, exactly. So. So. 
if you've invested the time to go to school and to do the training, why would you want to get left behind in your career? You're going to be an old dinosaur before <laughs> your time, and you're not going to understand how ultrasound's being used, all the technical advances, how to work, you know, integrate ultrasound into a team atmosphere, how to work cooperatively and collaboratively with physicians and with nurse practitioners and PAs who are learning this modality in school and on the job. You want to know how to fit into that piece of the puzzle. And as a sonographer, your role is vital to that. Mm -hmm. And so if you're not out there getting the education and asking the questions and moving forward, then you're going to get left behind. And that's nowhere mm -hmm. to be. And you're also doing a disservice uh, to your you, patients. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. I mean, that's really what it comes down. In fact, that's part of our mission. Everything at the end result is patient, improve patient yep. care. right? Yep. And I think that's really what it all comes out. But I think you touched on some really crucial points, right, is one is that the profession and the technology are changing and it's happening faster than it's ever happened yeah. before. Mm -hmm. So fast. I mean, from year to you year know, we see it. Like in here at Gulf right. Coast, as we're writing our programs for the following year and we're putting together our courses, we're looking at stuff and we're like, look how much this has changed in one year. It's yeah. incredible. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. I mean, the, the, the technology, the equipment, but also what you can see and diagnose is, has been changing. Yeah. And just as you said, if you're not keeping up with that as a sonographer, not only are you not growing in your profession, but you're also not doing the best by your patients. Perhaps, right, right. Where you're actually seeing some things that you might, uh, you might have missed 10 years ago because the technology was a lot harder, it was harder to read and see. Mm -hmm. And now you got a lot of, of changes within the technology. Mm -hmm. And I think another point that you made is just that broadening of the use of ultrasound. I mean, we're seeing it now where, and I think you touched on this, like physical therapists, mm -hmm. nurse yeah. practitioners, even midwives are starting to use this technology where they weren't, weren't before. And you know, I think that's one of the benefits at AIUM is that regardless of what specialty you're in, if you come to just AI on what we have available or come to our annual meeting, you're gonna get exposure to how ultrasound is being used across the specialties. Right. And you may pick something up in a session that you might not have attended or an article that you might not have read or a webinar that you might not have watched, but you just happen to do it because you're on the site or you're at one of the events that you're like, oh my goodness, I mm -hmm. can take this back in my space and I can make a difference. Right. And I think that that kind of gets lost too if you're not thinking of continual education and continual learning. Right. Yeah, exactly. Even if you just get exposed to a certain application that mm -hmm. you might not have been aware of, it, but you see the value of integrating that into your clinical practice, then you know that that's something I'm not very familiar with, but I need to learn more. And so my next step would be to um, do whatever is necessary to obtain the more, you know, detailed um, instruction on that. And that combined with the ability to network with other medical professionals is is of great value as well. So yeah. um, a lot of times people and I forget think that's that. A key point. <laughs> yeah. Because you can learn something and at the same time you have somebody to ask a question to if you mm -hmm. go back, right? Right. Exactly. Oh, I met so and so. I'm gonna ask them this question. Absolutely. Yeah, I think in general the sonography community, I mean we're we're all here to help each other, right? right. Mm -hmm. We're all here to help each other grow and learn. And so I, I've never heard of a case where a member's asked another member and that other person has refused to answer. No, <laughs> it's just like not us. Super collaborative <laughs> and helpful. Right. Yeah. You know, so I think that that's a, that's a, a key component too. Yeah. yeah, the best of the best, that's for sure. Sure. It's funny because <laughs> over the weekend I was on Facebook and I'm part of that Sonographers Do It in the Dark Facebook group, which mm. everyone pretty much knows that about that group. They were having a lengthy discussion about GI ultrasound, imaging bowel, things like that. And it was really interesting to see people who haven't worked in a space where they've been exposed to that, that that's possible. And you can do a lot when it comes to GI imaging. And there were several people who work in the veterinarian you know, industry who were weighing mm -hmm. in saying, oh my gosh, we've been using this for animals for 15 years. Where have you guys been? But it's just funny because until you see it, you get exposed to it in the medical space. You just don't even realize that it's a potential because in school you're taught, well, if it's filled with air, you can't look at it. 
we'll look at in the last couple of years how lung imaging has come around, GI imaging has you know is coming around, and we're just seeing all of these new applications that you wouldn't have known about otherwise. So you know, I agree with you. Sonographers are always willing to share their education, their experience, their knowledge with others, and do so enthusiastically. Yep. Well, what I like to see too, especially with within our, within our membership and and the cohorts of who are within our membership, is their willingness to continue to look to ultrasound for the opportunity to do stuff. Mm-hmm. And you know, most recently it's just around COVID. Like, right. Yeah. Like the use, like, like the use of like lung ultrasound just exploded, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. In, in twenty two, even though. Like people have been doing long old sound forever, right? right and it's been right. a really long time. But now all of a sudden, like, it's like, oh my God, here's a pandemic. <laughs> and hey, yep. look at all the cool stuff you can see with ultrasound <laughs> in the lungs. Right. It's crazy. Right? And it was, it was unbelievable how much activity there was and con- it actually continues because now it's long COVID and other things, but yep. continues in that space mm-hmm. that just brought that opportunity and that application really to the forefront across uh, the medical profession. Yeah. Right? yeah probably, most people probably didn't think, oh, we'll just take a look at the lung with the ultrasound. That probably didn't occur in a lot of areas and a lot of locations. Right. And now it's like, well, if somebody comes in, the first thing they're going to do is, oh, let's pull out the ultrasound, look at the lung, see yeah. what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and not radiate the patient right. and get good results, a yeah, better, better results. results right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Funny. Yeah. yeah. That's... Well, obviously, we're all extremely passionate. I think we've <laughs> pro- proven that um, when it comes to ultrasound, continuing education, and just, you know, making sure you're staying up to date and being as involved as you can. Now, we have a really diverse audience that listens to the show, you know, from all walks of the medical profession and even just you know, the non-medical person. Um, We have a lot of different diversity in our listeners. So I want to say, you know, we all think ongoing education provides opportunities for professional growth. And obviously that impacts our patient care, our patient outcomes, and how well we can deliver care to our patients. So can you share with our audience ways that they could support the AIUM Future Fund to continue providing these opportunities to sonographers, sonography students, and just medical professionals in general who are using ultrasound on a daily basis? I mean, obviously, as a a fund, uh, we accept donations. Mm -hmm. I would say that. Mm -hmm. So that that is is one way. Um, I think you know, I like to think of things broader in that respect Mm -hmm. is to, you know, for those who are using ultrasound within your audience is to continue to kind of push the envelope and where we can use it and how we can use it and keep asking the questions. But can ultrasound do this? Mm -hmm. Could we see this in ultrasound? Um, I, you know, I go back and look at, you know, for us, uh, dermatologic ultrasound is a growing area mm-hmm. where you go back 15, 20 years, like nobody was saying, well, can I see, can I use ultrasound to really look under, right, you know, superficially under the skin right. to see what's going on. Mm-hmm. Right. And now, you know, it's, it's huge. So to continue to push that envelope and then for the, for the non-ultrasound users within your audience is to ask the medical professional as you go in. Hey, can I can I get an ultrasound? I know you're ordering a CT scan or an MR. Can I get an ultrasound? Right. Is there an opportunity to do this? Because yeah. I think as we start to look at how do you push the use of medical ultrasound, right? It kind of has to be on both sides of that equation. You're right. Um, and so those kind of activities really help us as an organization, right? And mm-hmm. us within who are who are, are touting the benefits of medical ultrasound to continue to for the medical profession to use it, but uh, to kind of, in some ways, normalize the, the use of ultrasound across mm-hmm. the specialty. Because again, like we've been saying, there's so many ways and in so many situations can ultrasound either do the same or even better than other imaging that is faster. It's, you know, you don't, I don't know, there's a lot of patients who are like claustrophobic and have mm-hmm. other um, potential uh, concerns about having some other imaging that ultrasound just doesn't have. So, right. um, but yeah, as an organization, and then again, we have official statements. So any user, a lot of this, these resources are free. So mm-hmm. things on how to use uh, the modality, 
or how it should properly be used or just other issues within the ultrasound space. Um, all of that's on our website and is, and is available. So just take full advantage of it um, for anybody who, who may be interested in. Yeah. Because I do think there's some education around some issues with ultrasound that um, that do crop up from time to time that uh, organizationally we want to make sure people understand right. um, and that it's being used properly. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. You make a good point with the demand. You know, the patients need to demand ultrasound because mm-hmm. where there's demand, there will be supply. So, mm-hmm. you know, ask your doctor, is there something we can do with ultrasound first? Yeah. Something that we can look at with ultrasound and then go from there. It's and educating just, the public as well. So, yeah. you know, they have to learn, hear about it and learn the benefits and of uh, why ultrasound should be used first. And yeah. a, lot of, a lot of the patients aren't even aware of the fact that we can look at other things. Some of people still think it's only for babies. Just for babies. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that simple question actually educates the physician or the PA or whoever you're talking with, mm-hmm, right? right? Because they might not know. I mean, I think when, when we talk about it at, at the staff level, every one of us have been in a situation where we've gone for some procedure or you go to the doctor for whatever reason and we know that ultrasound can do it and that, 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 that they don't go to ultrasound first, right? Right. Mm-hmm. And so I, I am a firm believer that there's value in just asking the question. So even if the medical provider at the time says, well, no, I can't do that or, oh, we don't have that or whatever, mm-hmm. at least you're planting the seed, right? Yeah. As right. a patient for that medical professional would be like, well, hey, maybe I should check this out. Maybe there is a way to do this. Maybe there is a way to better image what what I and help my patients. But if the patients aren't asking those questions, right, it's really easy to stick with what you know and mm-hmm. how you know how to do it. Um, again, which ties back into the learning. So it's all yeah. a big cycle. It's, it's just one big cycle. <laughs> exactly right. Well, I think it's easy yeah. to become complacent, too, if you don't have somebody... You know, I mean, we all want to dig deep and have that internal motivation, but sometimes you just know that it comes down to having somebody who pushes you, Mm -hmm. pushes you. They're going to push you to do more, be more, be better. So, you know, I think that a patient asking a physician, that's a source of that pushing. A mentor working with a student or with another sonographer and saying, I challenge you to do this. Or, you know, when participants come to our courses and we say, we challenge you to take this back and ultrasound first see what you can do with ultrasound and then you can go to your other modalities so it's just constantly um, pushing people in your lives outside of their comfort zones which i was just saying this to casey before we started this episode he keeps doing to me every time we do a podcast (laughs) (laughs) it's the technology you know same thing with the ultrasound you know like you were mentioning about dermatology i mean years ago we wouldn't have had the uh the types of transducers and the frequency levels to be able to even consider doing that. So, you know, I think that goes along with the medical providers that they may be thinking, oh, well, I can't afford this. But the technology has changed so much. The price has come down. I mean, there's just many, many ways in which you can integrate the use of ultrasound. And Casey's does that with the podcast too we're always getting new things to learn about so you know yes. change is inevitable you have to change that's right you gotta keep moving forward well, I think that's one of the nice things about our the, our, the AIUM the organization and, and the diversity in the mix of who's within our membership because we're bringing together those people from those various backgrounds to have those conversations so we're mm-hmm. bringing the scientists and the sonographers and right. the physicians together to you know explore these ideas and to try to figure out is there a way to do this stuff so when somebody brings up an idea you know the scientists would be like well if we tweak this and we do this we may be able to do this and you know the sonographer's like well if only i could do this okay well let's Mm -hmm. have that discussion let's bring those things together and continue to push the use of this and the growth of this uh, within the medical space yeah. It's exciting, it and, is it, and exciting. it keeps changing, right? And it keeps growing, and it keeps uh, morphing and and improving, and it's and it's exciting to be a part of. Yeah, yep. it is early. I said exciting. that this morning. Yeah. I was like, "Who knew? Right? That this is where we would be when I started school. Never would have envisioned this. I've, I've been doing ultrasound since 1979, and I would never, in my wildest dreams, think where we were would be where we are today. So, um, 
you know, is just yeah. going to continue being like that as time goes on. So that just in itself should be a motivating factor for anyone involved in the ultrasound profession that, and also, you know, just reinforce the need to continue to learn. And there are opportunities yeah. between um, AIUM and mm -hmm. your professional societies that support you and and companies like Gulf Coast who we're here. That's what we're, that's what we all do. That's yeah. we're trying to promote education and help you be the best you can be. And and in the end, you're going going to be able to provide the best quality patient care. And that's that's the bottom line to it all. So Saving lives. we really appreciate the AIUM and what you have to offer. Um, for those of you listening, if you go to their website, it is uh, easy to navigate, and you'll be able to find all those resources sources and references that um, Peter has mentioned. And uh, I'm sure that uh, we're always happy to, to help as well. And uh, we all share, share the same goal and mission. So yeah, no, I agree. And I think, you know, it's, as, again, it's exciting to watch. It's exciting to be a part of and to see that growth and to be part of an organization that is helping educate and inform not only the medical profession, but also the general public in okay. uh, the, the benefits of ultrasound is, is, is exciting. And I'll put one plug in when you mentioned the website. We are actually redesigning the website, mm -hmm. and that should launch here within the next couple of months. So hopefully it will be even easier to find awesome. uh, those resources and information. Great. And that's AIUM.org, correct? Correct. Okay. Yep. Got it. Well, Awesome. Well, it has been uh, great speaking with you today, Peter. I think we're about out of time. So uh, I want to thank you for joining us today and sharing this great information with our listeners. And for our listeners, if you're interested in applying for the grant being offered, um, as Trish, Trisha mentioned, we have uh, linked the application in our show notes. Um, there is a deadline to apply, uh, which is December 16th. So you want to be sure to uh, check out those show notes and click on that link so that you can uh start moving forward with the application because, you know, who wants to turn down $500 that can help you to learn something new. So, Just for writing about how much you love your job. And exactly. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it's, it's a great brand. offering and um, we appreciate the AIUM and what you do for our profession. And um, also uh, we appreciate you, Peter, taking the time to meet with us today. Yeah. Uh, it was my pleasure. I really enjoyed it. Thank you guys for reaching out and having this discussion. And it's, any other topics that AIUM can help out with, we'd be more than happy. Wonderful. I'm sure we'll be in touch. Yes. So as Lori said, you guys definitely get down there in our show notes, click that link and check out this great opportunity. Again, that deadline is December 16th of this year. So you want to make sure you get your essays put together and get that stuff turned in in time. Um, and yes, thank you, Peter, for taking the time to chat with us today. And I want to give a big thanks to our listeners. Um, we recently hit 10,000 subscribers, which is a huge deal for us. We're so excited mm -hmm. and we're honored to be your ultrasound podcast of choice. So, you know, if you have a great idea for for some content, you can send it to us. You can email it to us at sonographylounge at gmail.com. And for those who do prefer a more visual platform, you can check us out on YouTube, where we now have our podcast available with video. So have a great day, you guys, and happy scanning. Happy scanning. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Sonography Lounge. Don't forget, if you like this episode, please subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find us on Instagram, at Sonography Lounge, and Twitter, at Sonography LNG. If you have any questions, comments, or topic suggestions, feel free to send an email to us at sonographylounge at gmail.com. Have a great week, and scan, scan, scan.